Welcome back everybody to Make Share Daily where you go to get your daily builds out of Legos. And today we're doing another programming of the EV3. So today we're covering what? Turning. Turning. So last episode we did moving forward and reversing. If you want to learn that, please go check that out. Today we're doing turning though. So we're going to operate this EV3 in a way that will make it turn in, a direct, in the direction you want it to turn. First, we're gonna start off with pulling one of these programs up. So you can see move steering, you can just pull that up. So in this case, you bring up these programs, move steering, bring it up, and this is, has all the defaults on it. So this is turn in rotations, Go, um, go in the straight direction, and this is 75% power, and we're gonna do one rotation. If we just operate that alone, it's just gonna go forward. So that's the same command that we gave it before to move it forward. But in this case, we want it also to take a left turn. So in order to make a left turn, it's the same pull. You pull this up, well, what we've done is we've adjusted it. So instead of zero, we've done negative 50. So now that's going to turn to the left, right? Yes. And then we have it going straight again for one rotation, then turning right for one rotation. So whenever this block is not on your program list, it will not be utilized. So now we can hit play. It's going to go straight, take a left turn, go straight, take a right turn. So it's done a zigzag. So it's gone forward, then turn almost 45 degrees, gone forward, turn 45 degrees again, so that it's lined up to go forward one more time. So if you have an obstacle on your play field, or you have a robot that has to go around something, so you have, you need to make sure that the robot turns away from that, from the obstacle. So let's watch how it goes around it. So we're gonna hit go, it's gonna go forward, and then now it's positioned itself in a way that it can go forward again now that it's gone around the obstacle. So that's very important when you do an FLL because there's a lot of obstacles on the play field that you have to navigate around. And so there's a lot of times where you'll go forward many rotations, have to make a turn, then go forward many rotations again to avoid the obstacles that are on the play field. So that's how you set up a turn, a simple turn. Now, if you want to adjust these numbers and test them, if you want to not go 45 degrees, you want to go 90 degrees, you can do that by making the adjustment here. And now, when we run the program, take this obstacle out of the way, when we run the program, it's going to make a more drastic turn. So you can see there, it actually went more than 90 degrees by the negative 100. So you gotta just fine tune that, do trial and error multiple times, right? Yeah. So you do trial and error multiple times until you get the correct orientation that you want your robot in each and every time. And it's just trial and error and making sure that the turn that you wanted is operated correctly by the EV3. Talk about the different types of turning. So we have pivot here. And the difference between pivot and what I just showed you is that when you do pivot, it's just operating the one motor. So how do you get that? So in this case, you do large motor and you can change the motor from A to B to C or D. In this case, if we have it A, and I take it off of here and I put in the A motor, it's gonna operate the motor that's attached to the A port. So in this case, our left motor is attached to A over here and our right motor is attached to D over there. And that's very common. So if you wanna move both at the same time, 
you're pulling up from the move steering, which does A and B, A and D, or B and D, but it does two at the same time. In our case, if you wanna pivot and you wanna spin the robot, and if you wanna spin the robot around an object that's right next to the left tire or the right tire, you can pivot around that object by utilizing just this function, which is the large motor, and operating that one motor so that it just pivots all the way around the one option, the one obstacle. Any other examples of when you might want to use pivot? Mm. No? Okay. To spin all the way around 360, we have this. We've pulled up the steering and we've created a negative 100 and we've put in rotations of three. So three rotations, not one, which is the default, three rotations. So let's see what that does. So, so it does a 360 turnaround all the way around and facing the same direction. So if there was a, if you're creating dancing robots, you might want a function where you have to turn around 360 degrees. If you're in FLL, you might want to turn around 180. Any, any which way you want to turn around and turn on that dime, you can use this function. It's just a matter of how many rotations you want to utilize. And can you use, fun, can you use decimal points in the rotations? Yeah. Yes. So if you find that three rotation is for 360 for your particular robot, then maybe 1.5 is the right amount for 180, but it might not be. You have to test it out. You have to trial and error the different amount of rotations that you need each and every time to make sure that it's exactly where you want it to be. Later on, we'll talk about functions of the gyroscope and that can feed logic in whether or not you have a 360 and you've turned all the way around and then you can stop the turn via the program. But in this case, you can trial and error how many rotations you need to make your turn in the direction that you want it to go. Next type of turning is the move forward and turn a little bit. So a big sweeping turn. So if let's say you are in FLL, you have obstacles here. So there's two ways to get around an obstacle, right? You can go all the way up to this line, make a turn for 45, go a little bit further, make another turn for 45, and then go forward. That makes a 90 degree turn around an obstacle. Or you can make an advanced turn where you're driving this wheel forward still, but you're also driving this wheel faster. So it does these nice big sweeping motion around the obstacle. In that case, what you want to do is you want to drive the left motor faster than the right motor. To start that, what you want to do is you want to grab the move tank command, bring that up, and the default is 75 and 75. What that does is just moves the tank forward. But if you want to drag this foot a little bit and move this foot faster or this wheel faster, you have to make the modification. And so what we've done is we've dragged the right foot a little slower. So we've set the right foot up to be 15 and the left foot or the left motor to be 75 for one rotation. So if I hit go, it's gonna make a sweeping motion around the obstacle. It's not just pivoting, it's making a turn, a forward motion turn. So if you're in a car, you're moving forward and you're turning at the same time. And that's what you're getting out of, of this. So if I wanted to do seconds instead of rotations, let's see what that looks like. So it's coming around that obstacle and we can make an adjustment here. We're gonna go 40. And you can see a more gradual sweep around the obstacle, right? I'll show that again. 
So it's going forward and turning at the same time. So it's moving forward, turning at the same time, and going around the obstacle. So you can make multiple choices here. You can make it turn on a dime by setting 75 and negative 75. And what that's doing is it's pulling one wheel backwards and moving one wheel forward and making it turn on the dime. Or you can make it real gradual by just making a small adjustment. So instead of 75, maybe I just make it 60. And it's making a very gradual turn. In that case, so that is a case where you may be going down a particular track and you have to go around that track very gradually. You can make that adjustment by making changing the speed of each of the motors independently and creating that that gradual turn and it's all about trial and error and the more you try it the more you're going to get the exact turn that you were looking for right so that's about all the turning functions that you need to know in order for you to create your best ev3 robot or your best fl robot if you like this video please give us a thumbs up if you want to see more of the programming of the ev3 please subscribe down below and you're going to see a lot more tutorials of the ev3 itself Thanks, everybody, for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye.